Hi, Clutter Fairy fans. This is the Clutter Fairy Weekly for July 13th, 2021. I'm your co-host, Ed Gumnick, and I'm speaking with Gail Goddard, professional organizer and owner of the Clutter Fairy in Houston, Texas. Hi, everybody. The Clutter Fairy Weekly is a webcast and podcast where we dig deep into the clutter that stands between people and the lives they want to be living. We aim to make sense of where so much stuff comes from in the first place, and we offer strategies to slow down the accumulation, reduce the collection, and comfortably manage the stuff we choose to keep. We rely heavily on the questions and topic suggestions we get from you, our viewers, and listeners. If you're joining us in Zoom for the first time, you can share your comments and questions via the chat, and I'll try to make sure Gail gets to them before we move on to another topic. You can also use the raised hand feature if you'd like to let me know that you, that you want to make a comment or ask a question yourself via audio or video. We're streaming the webcast live on Facebook, so you can also share your questions and comments there, and I'll relay them to Gail. And every week during the live show, you can call us at 669-900-6833, use meeting ID 993-419-863, and password CLUTTER to join the meeting. Okay, we're going to start as we usually do by following up on the last tittle. That was two weeks ago on June 29th, and that we called it T is for Tittle. <laughs> the assignment was to pick an item from our long alphabetical list and spend 10 minutes or so on whatever decluttering task the prompt inspired for you. We want to hear from our participants in Zoom and on Facebook who made some alphabetical progress this week. Please let us know in the comments. It looks as if our audience had a lot of fun with our alphabet episode. We got dozens of comments and emails expanding on or suggesting alternatives to the topics we chose for the letters of the alphabet. Matilda on YouTube even gave us an entire other alphabet. And here's, here's Matilda's <laughs> submission. Accumulating bin, clutter, dump, exchange, free, gather, hoard, inspiration, junk, knowledge, list, mend, neat, organize, plan, question, rent, swap, throw, unhappy, visitors, want, extra years, zzz, as in the sound of <laughs> snoring. I'm not, I'm not sure whether the snoring, the z's, the z's were meant to be a critique of that episode. <laughs> <laughs> if Matilda was just tired for working so hard on her list, we're going to go with a second explanation. So I love that it, she got to the end and just started to snore. That yes. <laughs> made me happy. Thanks to everybody who sent us their letter and how their project went. We did indeed get a bunch of emails with their specific letter and then all the comments on the, the YouTube channel itself were really, it was wonderful. Everybody got in there and talked about what they'd done. It seemed to really work as a starting point for many of you. So it was it, it worked as an inspiration. That was wonderful. Uh, one that springs to mind is from C. Jenkins, who posted E is for energy to start and complete a task. S for stamina to maintain clutter free, which I thought were both very positive ones. I really like that one. So <laughs> thanks, everybody, for commenting and uh, responding so well to the tittle. It sounds like most of you had some lighthearted fun while you did a little work and it was uh, you got somewhere so yay on y'all congratulations um samudra gave us a nice spin she said matilda may have been implying that she wants more sleep <laughs> right <laughs> it's not us it's her mm. uh and cat cat said i had so much fun with the alphabet tittle I added a twist to it and got rid of one item from each letter. Oh. A, aluminum foil to Z, zebra socks. <laughs> I zebra got, socks, that's awesome. I got rid of way more than 26 items and did a lot of cleaning. It was really a fun way to get going and stay motivated. Cool. Ten, 10 of 10 and we'll do again. Yay, that's a good one. Thank you. And I'm really surprised how motivating it's been. Faith said, I, choo I chose H for hobbies and moved my sewing machine and tools out of the closet so that I am motivated to use it all. There you go. You can't sew if the sewing machine's in the closet. That's awesome. Yeah, if, that, if you use this tittle in order to get back into your hobby and have some fun being creative, that's really a great result. That's wonderful. Congrats. Okay. We have a lot to talk about on our main event today, so let's get to it. Okay. So in one of our most popular 
episodes of the last year, we compared prioritizing projects to a juggling act. That episode was about setting priorities for your organizing projects. And it, and we got a lot of positive feedback and many requests for more ideas on the hot topic of prioritization. This is a place where people really get stuck. So today we're going to talk more about principles for setting organizing, organizing priorities to help you choreograph your decluttering projects. Setting priorities is difficult for a lot of my clients. Uh, first, they're overwhelmed by the scale of the task. There's so much to do and the end result is so far away in their minds. Besides, they have no idea the steps one needs to take to get from the chaos they're looking at to the beautiful, serene, efficient, productive space they're dreaming about. So either they're frozen in place because they don't know where to start or they're off shopping for the new organizing stuff that will make it all work. I'm using air quotes in that moment. It seems like their brains have short circuited and nothing is happening. Or they're buying new product to put in a room that is empty in their minds. Not being able to start is a problem. And shopping is a tangential activity. There are a few steps before that and they run in a logical order. Organizing any space is like building one of those Lego Star Wars battleships. You can't build the radio towers and the command deck without building the main body of the ship first. Each, each uh, fancy embellishment piece rests on the body somewhere. Organizing is the same way. You can't build a fancy new room with decor and cool new office accessories and curtains until you've cleared out the exploded bomb that's happening in there first. So we're gonna talk about the priorities of mapping a room, how to get from A to Z in that room and what steps need to happen in what order. And hopefully at the end, you'll be able to apply that map to your room and get there as well. <clears throat> the first priority in doing any kind of room, any kind of organizing project is gonna be, you need to decide the end use of the room. So what do you want the space to be when it's done? Is it an office that still needs to be an office? Or is it an office that now needs to be a baby's room? Are you changing the formal dining room to a craft room? You get the idea. If the room is changing function, you'll be removing the contents related to the old function and the stuff, all that stuff will have to go somewhere else. Then you'll be bringing in new stuff to go with the new function of the room. If the room is keeping the same function, it was an office, it'll be an office. You'll be reducing the volume, removing what doesn't support the function of the room anymore and rearranging the furniture somewhat. So you have to look at your room and go, okay, what I need to do in this room is I need it to be the baby's room. And now it's com something completely different or it's an office that is non-functioning and I need it to be an office that functions. <laughs> so A, you gotta, the first priority is what is that room going to be when it grows up basically. The second priority on that list and the second step here is to take inventory of the room's contents. And I'm gonna elaborate. You don't remember what's in there. You have a vague idea what kinds of stuff might be there but you have no real clue exactly what's there. So now it's time to figure that out. This step takes the most time and you should expect to be here a while. I know it's boring or it's extremely irritating, but you gotta hang in there. You're an adult and you can delay gratification for the big payoff later on. So this is the purpose of sorting the contents. So you can see what's in there under all those piles and figure out what really needs to stay or not. So sort the contents, and that might be multiple passes if the contents are overwhelming or very dense. You can sort for trash, recycling, shredding, donations, things to relocate, and what's gonna keep. And if, you're, if you feel comfortable at this stage, you can sort the keep items into a few categories as you go, or you can just make a big keep pile if it's too distracting to try to sort those keeps at this stage. Every room can be sorted for trash, recycling and shredding first if that's the easiest way to dive in and get started. And every time you stop for the day, take all the trash and recycling out and immediately bin it. Take all the relocate items to the place where they should be 
even if that space isn't ready for it. Get it in the right room at least. That's because those are going to be part of the next room's inventory. You may be relocating furniture to another space or another person if that furniture isn't going to be part of the new room. So furniture has a big footprint and you don't just want to wedge it in somewhere else in the house. If a piece of furniture no longer suits this room or doesn't make sense somewhere else either in the house, then it's time to offer it up to your friends and family, send it to resale, pay to have it hauled a donation, et cetera. Make that happen now and get it gone. So it's not in the way of what needs to go in there. <clears throat> it's very hard to work around big pieces of the wrong furniture. Make releasing that stuff a priority at this point until it's gone. If you imagine that you were converting a desk to a baby's room, clearly all the furniture, the desk, the chair, the file cabinets, they're not gonna stay in the baby's room. And you gotta bring in baby bed and bassinet and all the other stuff that you're gonna deal with with the baby. So basically you're gonna take everything out of that room that's it's a piece of furniture and it's gotta go somewhere else to bring in and set up for a baby's room. Furniture just takes a lot of space up and it takes a lot, it's a lot of work to get rid of it. And this is the place where you stop and figure out what am I doing with that? You're gonna sort through everything and then put the key pile in categories. And it doesn't matter if you do this at the same time as you do the general sort, or if you do it as a di discrete step after the trash, recycle, shred, relocate piles. The goal is to touch everything in the room, decide if you still have to keep it, and then decide if it supports the end purpose of the room. A keep pile sorted into various categories is your final inventory. This is the stuff that has to fit back into the space. And so, once you've sorted everything, you now know what all is in the room and you've been removing things that don't need to be there via trash, shred, relocate, recycle. All those things have gone away and now you have the inventory of the keep items that need to be staged back in the room. Gail, before you go on to the next part, I just want to shout out to one special viewer. Sonia is with us from Victoria, Australia, where it is three o'clock in the morning. Oh, Sonia! Hi, honey! Thanks for signing on in the middle of the night. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. I feel so special today. That's amazing. Okay, and now back to now back to our webcast already in progress. Right, and I guess that, you know, if you fall asleep in the middle, we cannot fault you <laughs> since it's 3 a.m. <laughs> okay, so the third priority in the room, based on the function of the new room, now you need to figure out what the furniture situation needs to be. Remember that the furniture may be part of the organizing systems like a file cabinet, or it may house some of the organizing systems like an office drawer that holds a drawer organizer tray, or it may be the comfy chair you need to work in there. Get the furniture pieces in place, third priority. The fourth priority is to review the keep category piles and decide where each of those categories is gonna live and be used. Now you need to evaluate whether you have a place where you'll park each category or if you need to introduce organizing products or take over drawers or need shelving added or whatever. Make sure that any keep category will fit in the parking space to you decide to use. Don't force something into a space because it's cute there. Put it in a place that can hold it and absorb any increase in volume over the next six months. If you've maxed out of the space, as soon as you put everything away, you're already in trouble. You need to have a space that can take what you've got and can flex to absorb a little bit more over time. Before deciding on where to park something or where to insert an organizing product, look at the category of stuff and ask when you'll need to access it, whether you're going to add to it or take something out. If you don't need it very often, don't use an easy access space to park it. If you want to get into it every day, then make sure it's very easy to access. And pick organizing products to support how often you want to use something. This is why I always tell people, don't go shopping until you're done with your sorting. Because now you have a bunch of piles of stuff and you have to decide, okay, there's baby clothes. Where am I going to store that? 
there's the files that I actively work in for work and here's my home files and are they going to go in the same place? Can I put one in the desk drawer and one somewhere else? You have to think through those piles and why they're those categories and why they're important and how you have to interact with them and decide on whether you can park them in what's existing in the room or whether you have to add something in order to make it more manageable. I think people skip this part a lot. They don't actively think about, I took the inventory of the room, here's all of my keep piles and I'm looking at them and I'm not sure, I'm just gonna start putting stuff away because you're frustrated and you're tired and that room's been a wreck and she started the project. And so they skip the process of thinking their way through each of the keep piles and why you kept it and how you wanna store it. And they just go randomly buy some organizing products, bring them in and start slamming them in. I think it's more important to stop and think about each of those piles and how you want to interact with them. And then you will more likely get a product that works and you'll be able to tell really quickly whether it actually is going to function for you when you get it home. So the fifth priority, having done all that thinking and processing is to install everything. This happens at the end mostly, and you can decorate some as you do it also, but the priority now is getting everything put away. Don't give up here, put it all away. If something doesn't fit where you decided to park it, either resort it and let more of it go or change the parking space. This is a little bit like a game of Tetris. You may have to shuffle it a few times to make it work the best way possible. So we wanted to give you an example of a particular room. And the one that Ed picked today was a laundry room. So the first priority, deciding the end use of the room would seem like it's all set. It's still gonna be a laundry room when you're done, not the least of because there's a hose where the water comes in and that big funky plug that the dryer goes into. So the laundry room is a laundry room and that's exactly what you want to be at the end, but what else are you gonna use the room for? Or what other purposes has it picked up along the way? way right, is it functioning <laughs> as a mud room? And is this where the kids' backpacks get dropped? Do you store all the Costco large paper products in there? Did someone shove a box of Christmas stuff in there? <laughs> Decide what other functions the laundry room needs to support besides the laundry. So you're gonna lay out things related to making the laundry work for you, but then you might also need to be supporting some additional functioning. Assuming there's four cabinets and you only need one for laundry supplies. What's the appropriate use for the other three cabinets? Second priority is taking inventory of the room's contents. You're going to open all the storage in the laundry room and pull everything down. And this is going to highlight a lot of mad stashing. Whenever I clear out a laundry room, I always find a lot of weird stuff up in the cabinets that got shoved there when nobody was looking. It's like, okay, I just need it like this. I need this out of my face and I'm just going to shove it up here. It so, can be the last stop before the garage, I think. Right, right. It's on people. the way to the garage. Exactly. It's always yeah. in the back door or close to the back door. And so it does get a lot of, um, you know, backwash from the tide. <laughs> <laughs> or I haven't yet given up on this thing quite to the point of consigning it to the, to the garage or attic, but. Right but I'm going to yeah. hide it in here for a while. Yeah. <laughs> so sorting those contents will likely find a lot that needs to be relocated and you're going to find failed laundry products that need to be trashed. So the third priority is to figure out what furniture situation needs to be. And in this room, you're really looking at whether there's space for anything like that or not. Most laundry rooms uh, have space for the washer and dryer in whatever form, but depending on how big that room is, you might also be looking at whether you can add a bench or a shelving unit or some shelves on the wall, that kind of stuff. You might be able to add something in to be more useful or helpful. The fourth priority is to review the keep categories and decide where they live. The laundry products should be easy to reach and near the machines. The real challenge is what else you're putting in the room. So do all those keep piles make sense for this room? For those that you want in the laundry room, how can they be stored with good access and without being in the way of the laundry process? Now is where you start adding organizing products. Would an over the door shoe organizer help with cleaning products? Do you need hooks on the wall for the backpacks? Do you need a shoe tree or a bin for shoes? Can you add shelving that's more accessible than over the washing machine? I don't know why every contractor 
puts cabinets at the top of the washing machine. So you have to lean over the washing machine, the dryer to get to the cabinet. And I don't know about you, but unless you're Ed's height, I was going to say over if, the washing machine is a, is a horrible, horrible thing to try to do. If you're six foot four with arms like a gorilla, it's not really a problem. Right. But most of us cannot claim that. And getting over the washing machine is a pain. And the bigger the machines, like some of those machines have like drawer mounts that they sit on so that they're taller. They're even more tall, another 12 or 18 inches tall. The machines are deep. And so you're leaning over like three feet of laundry machine to get to the wall. It's, it's amazing. So I don't know why any contractor ever puts all that cabinetry over the washing machine. At the very least, it should be to the left and the right so that you can be standing in front of the cabinet or shelf and make it work. So you may want to add some more accessible laundry at shelves on the walls that are not straight over the machines, but to the sides. Or maybe you can do a freestanding shelving unit if you put in, um, you know, a wire rack in there that is just going to stand on its own feet so that it's accessible and usable. Do you need a laundry sorting cart? Don't forget, don't forget to consider what you'll do with the laundry baskets that are full of dirty or clean clothes. All of those things have to be considered about how and where they're going to go. And this is the time when you get to figure that out. Then the fifth priority is to install it all. So once you've added your wall hook, hooks or you bought the shelving unit or you get a bench with bins, it's time to put everything away. And this is the moment when all your work gels into the well thought out usable room that you wanted. The steps to get there are messy and they're hard work, but the end result of this dance is a well thought out functioning room. And it'll so be worth the effort. <laughs> you just have to trust me if you don't believe me. <laughs> you know, I always wait in. In this example, I would wait into the laundry room and start pulling things down. I start doing these steps without even thinking about them. I think that the clients are shocked at the destruction that I'm wreaking. Like I start tearing everything apart and they, I'm like, God, what is she doing? Why is she doing it? But it is a deconstruction. It's always a deconstruction before you rebuild and the rebuilding is always at the end. So you have to keep the end result in mind and recognize that it's going to be chaotic for a while before you get to the end result that you want. Ginger says, the inventory method is my way to declutter anything. Decisions slow me down. When I do them from an arm's length, it goes much quicker. So she says, one, I take a photo. Two, take a quick inventory. Three, make the decisions about each item. Four, take the actions. Put away, relocate, donate, recycle, trash. There you go. And for everybody that has a, a super overwhelming room, if you have the ability to focus on sorting the entire room, great. But if you can only stand to be in there for an hour at a time, you don't have to get all these steps done in one day or in one sitting. And, and I suspect that you won't be able to get them all done in one sitting. And so just recognize that you can sort this little corner of the room and then walk away and come back and sort that little corner of the room and walk away. And you can sort of make your way around the room and you'll end up with four or five piles and then you can merge all those piles together and sort them. And so you can break these steps down to the smallest space possible that you feel comfortable working on. And just know that you have to, you'll just have to keep coming back until it's done. It'll take time. If you have, if you're in a room, if you're in the living room and it's going to become a craft room, you're going to have a lot of furniture that has to go out. You're going to bring in a whole bunch of other furniture that needs to come in and Maybe you got to get the handyman to come in and, and do some installation, repair, setup. There's all kinds of things that have to be, yeah, that it's going to take some time and you're going to have to do the steps. And you can't put everything in the room away until you have gotten the new piece of furniture or gotten the new table or put in the new shelf. And so those things become a priority because you can't put your room back without the new storage places, the new organizing systems that you need in place. We get distracted by how overwhelming the room is, it, depending on how dense and how bad it's gotten. So that's that shuts people down from thinking about the priorities here. And then we also get distracted by the steps that we think we can accomplish. Like, I understand shopping. 
So I'm going to go shop for a while because if I get a bunch of organizing products and you know, that will make it all happen. It's not really true. I mean, there is some steps to do in an order to get you there. And if you don't feel like you know what to do, sometimes it's hard to wade in and start trying to do it. You just have to trust that it'll be okay. I don't know how to say that other than if you can hang with it long enough, you will eventually get to the end. And it may not happen in a hurry, but it can be done. Leela said the less stuff you have, the less storage puzzles you have to solve. Yes. The more I declutter it, the more smoothly daily chores and activities go. Yes. And being able to put things away is not the same thing as storing them. So when you cram a whole bunch of stuff into a cabinet to store it, you're making it very hard to use it. So part of the conversation that you're having as you do these processes is, I have these keep things, I'm keeping them because of this reason, I need to be able to get them, I need to be able to do something with them, I need to be able to once a week get in here and take out this thing and use it. And so if you make that one thing uh, difficult to unpack, basically, then you're storing it instead of creating an organizing system around it. You want to recognize the things that you want to be able to use and create a space, a system that supports you easily using it. You don't want barriers to entry here. I watch people cram stuff into a cabinet until it's completely stuffed full. And then the first thing I think is, yeah, when they need something on the third shelf and they open this cabinet, they're going to have to spend 15 minutes taking stuff out to get to the one thing that they wanted. So you sort of answered a comment Marcy made, which is, she said, I put most things away like Tetris to an obsessive point. Sometimes I try to make the most use of space and I'm kind of prone to that too, to the point where it takes me five minutes to find everything I need. If I want to do some baking, because a, a whole bunch of stuff has to come out. There's this area that is just, stuffed full of flowers and and meals and seeds and additives and yeah um and it all has to come down yeah it has to i have to pull a whole <laughs> bunch of stuff out which tells me there's still too much yeah and, and baking is one of those things that uh, most people don't bake every day most people cook every day but they don't bake every day and so baking stuff i tend to put baking stuff in bins in upper shelves. And then when you want to bake, then you need to all of the things you need to bake with. And so all of those things come down out of the, out of the cabinet in bins because handing down several bags of flour to get to the one that you want is harder than pulling down a bin of flowers and plucking one out and putting the bin back. And so um, that's an example of making it usable, right? Yeah and easily accessible. I mean, even if you bake once a week, the other six days of the week, that stuff is in the way. So yeah. it needs to be not in front of the stuff that you're going to be cooking with. It's a clue to me that we're not quite there yet. We either have too much stuff or we don't have enough storage solutions. Mm -hmm. We're we haven't quite of, implemented the systems you need. Yeah. I think we're thinking about a high up shelf in the kitchen there, which is about the only option that's still available to us is a, a very, a very high shelf that's sort of, that's above the laundry room and powder room doors, mm. but where stuff could go that doesn't have to come down frequently. And it needs to be, it doesn't need to be loose up there. It needs to be in a container. So in essence, you're using the cabinet to store it, but you're not using the cabinet to use it. You're using the bin to use it. And so you pull the bin down and then sit that on the counter, use, 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 put the stuff back in and store up in the upper cabinet. Deborah said, if I can't find a spot for something, I wonder if I need it, which I which think is a, a good, is a good point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and my friend Lorinda does this a lot. She's an engineer. She, she was a geologist and an engineer and she will take a box and decide that all the things that she's going to keep need to fit in that box. And so she will Tetris it in, but it's like, you have now made a, a completely 100% dense square of stuff that cannot that you've just now turned that stuff into a cube which is makes none of it usable you just created a solid out of it 
And so when you put this stuff into the cabinet and you wedge it all in there to fit, all you really do is convert it into a storage unit and a solid. And anytime you need something out of it, you deconstruct the solid. You have to take it completely apart to get the one thing. And so I talk a lot about, I know you can cram more in the cabinet, but the more that you put in there, the more it converts to storage and the less it becomes usable. And you need air in the cabinet to make it usable. You need to be able to see stuff. You need to be able to put things in and out easily. And it needs to be something that you can grab the one thing that you want without having to take 20 things out to get to it. If the amount of stuff that you're Tetrising into that cabinet or drawer or box don't fit in there so tightly, then it's not a good system for that, that keep pile. It was the system that you used, but it's not the system that makes it happen. <laughs> it doesn't make it doesn't make it usable and functional for you. Is what I'm saying. Um, and I, I know lots of people see cabinets, and there's like airspace in there. That means that we can put more stuff in it. But the like I said, the more yes, you can get you can remove airspace and replace it with stuff. But then you have a packed closet you have a packed drawer you have and you can't find anything you want and and as soon as you make the tetris come together and it's a perfect fit the minute you need something out of it you've destroyed the tetris <laughs> it's <laughs> it, it like it ruins the whole layout because you've you've taken it apart to get something out so it's not a good goal i guess what i'm saying you know maximizing how much stuff you cram into a space is not the good goal here the better goal is to get the stuff that you want to be able to access accessible and easy to access. Sherry says, I'm working in my craft room and trying to organize it at the same time. Mm. How do I work and organize the same room? You want to be able to keep functioning in it while you're working on it. And so this is sort of the definition of step, stair stepping in small bites around the room. So if you, A, you can't destroy the room completely all at once to accomplish your goal, if you want to keep working in it. So you're going to pull down one cabinet, one drawer, one box and sort through that content. And you can do all the same things there, figure out what's there, figure out if it needs to be there as you're sorting like with like, okay, I'm going to keep all these things, but this stuff is really fabric that goes with the fabric instead of beads that goes with the beads i'm you know making stuff up here but you're sort of a chunking down your sorting and keep pile organization in a whole lot more stages that way instead of doing a gross sort of the whole room simultaneously you're going to do this one bin and, and stop and then you're going to do one shelf and stop and you're going to do this shelf and stop and that container and stop and as you work your way around the room You'll, it, you'll end up relocating from this bin to that bin and this shelf to that shelf. You'll be trying to sort and your like items with like, and you'll be doing it long-term over many shelves. So it's sort of like you sort and sort and then sort together and then you sort another piece and sort together and sort another piece and sort together. And so you'll be retouching things a few times as you go, which is fine. Um, it allows you to keep working and it allows you to keep creating and still improve the room as you go. There may be a point if you sort of sorted your way around the room finally while you're still working, you may want to pause at that point and do a final shuffle of all of the keep things to make sure that all of the sorting is complete across the whole room and all surfaces. You may have to stop working to do that. And then you can pause and think about, okay, this is how my room is laid at right now, but would I I really have way more crystals than I thought. I really have way more this kind of wool uh, yarn than I thought. Maybe it, I used to put it in this container, but it doesn't fit anymore. Or I use this yarn differently now and I don't need to access it as often. Or this is all of my tools and it's grown, it's outgrown my tool cart and it needs, to, I need something better. So you have to evaluate based on how your keep piles ended up at the end. What organizing systems need to change? Where do I not fit anymore? Where is how I did it before not supporting the crafting that I'm doing now? And so reevaluating 
where things are going to park and how often you use them and where you use them will dictate some changes in in the room and you can think about that and then start installing and moving things around a little bit at a time as well i'm going to add a shelving unit i'm going to change this bin out for that bin i'm going to hang these things on the wall now because now instead of 20 of them i have 150 of them you know you can evaluate piece by piece of your room what how it needs to be parked differently it'll take a while that's okay you like being in the craft room who cares right <laughs> Linda said, I don't understand what Tetris something means. And several people chimed in in the chat to clarify, but we should say it for anyone watching the video or listening to the podcast who might not be familiar with Tetris. Yeah. Are we dating Tet ourselves by calling it We Tetris? might be a little bit. Tetris, <laughs> yeah. Oh, there may be people too young to know Tetris and also people too old, too old to know Tetris. Uh, but Tetris was a, a game popular in, what, 90s? I'm not sure. But yeah. yeah. Um, a computer game where you blocks dropped out of the sky blocks of different shapes and you had to turn them to fit and tuck together neatly and as you completed rows those rows would disappear and so it it was a, a moving puzzle game the goal and, of which uh, was to com completely make all of the all of the blocks fit all together 100 percent. yeah with and, no empty and, space and make solid yeah. So that's how we're getting the analogy out of it, because that's the goal of the game was to make it into a solid block or a solid line. Oh, Tetris came out in 1984. There you go. See? Okay. Late 80s, early 90s. Sherry mentioned I use a container for baking items, so I just take the whole container out. That corrals all the baking stuff. And then Connie mentioned using cardboard boxes temporarily, temporarily to sort things mm -hmm. and moving them in, into bins of the right size. Yeah, or, you know, a more active use. Think of a, in the kitchen, a spice rack that you're going to put all the spices on. Like, you can put them all in a box while you're sorting them and getting rid of them and trying to decide how many you have. And then you can go buy a spice rack that will work. Once and you see how big the box is. See how yeah. big the spice, is, the spice yeah. pile is, exactly. And Naomi said, I tried a bin for baking ingredients, but too often I wanted just one and taking out the whole bin to sort through was an extra step. So I substituted a tray. I can either pull out the whole tray if I need multiple things, or I can reach in and just take one thing off the tray Plus in the, the cupboard. Thing you want. Yeah. That totally works. Yeah, I mean, generally baking just, if you throw all the baking stuff in amongst the cooking stuff, I find that most cooks are just constantly moving around the baking stuff to get to what they need for the day. Making baking portable and movable, unless you're a pastry chef for a living <laughs> or you, uh, you know, are somebody that bakes bread every day, uh, doing that is easier than trying to wade through all of those baking supplies to get to the regular daily stuff. And baking is one of those things where everybody buys 400,000 accessories to go with. Like there's all kinds of pots and pans and cake shapes and cookie cutters and the accoutrement for baking gets really elaborate. And so they take up a lot of space. Lewis said, I found out last night I have 400 tea bags. <laughs> I don't know what to do with them. With my current usage, that is a 40 year supply. Yes, that means that the tea will lose its flavor and no longer be worth the effort, right? Um, so if you are part of any kind of a church, social group, hobby group, any place that with a meeting room, you, know, you can go and add them to that. Um, a food pantry, if they're still in good shape, you can give them to a food pantry. Somebody says dye shirts with the tea bags. <laughs> There's an example of an artist finding a use for everything, right? <laughs> That's hilarious. Um, this is a great comment from, I, I don't know the name. It's uh, sort of a long handle. So I'm just going to say, call it FC. FC says, I'm trying to get used to the concept of empty spaces. My newly reorganized spice drawers have room for three jars across and 24 front to back leaving a space where I can't fit in a fourth jar across. I'm now trying to resist filling in the extra space with skinny boxes of pudding, jello, et cetera, et cetera. I have way more spices than I ever thought. When I couldn't find one because of the cluttered mess, I bought more. Oh, I now have one, at right. least a two-year supply of poultry seasoning. <laughs> Start seasoning up that chicken, man. You need to get heavy-handed with it too, right? <laughs> I, but I, I think that's, that's a, 
there's a big question there, uh, which is if you've lived a long time with tight spaces and full full cabinets, it feels normal. Yeah. So how ha- how do you get used to empty space and yeah, get I mean, comfortable I, with it? That's definitely one that you breathe into the empty space. Like you have to think of the empty space not as a challenge to be filled, but as a place of serenity and calm and peace. It isn't something that is wrong because it's empty. It's that it's clear and clean and serene. So change the way that you think about it. Try to imagine it as that empty space is not challenging me. (laughs) It's not a hole that needs to be plugged. It is a nice clean space. So I have a little bit more room to shuffle around my spices and I can function in that spice store easier. It's, it's so that I can put the, the towels away without having to cram and wedge and shove into the linen closet. It's that I can do the laundry and fold the towels and I can go open the linen closet and look at that big open hole where I can sit uh, some towels in without even thinking about it. And it's not a struggle. And I think we get used to that struggle of it's so hard to get something put away. It's so hard to wedge it in. It's so hard to pull that out and you know like you don't want the put away process to be so multi-stepped and difficult that you have to climb over a whole bunch of processes to get it put away think of that empty space is your breathing room and your ease of use room and your blank slate of calm and you know take a deep breath and get used to it you've been living with that level of noise you know, I, if I talk a lot about the stuff is sitting there going, clean me, clean me, clean me. Like it's, it's very, you know, loud and barky in your mind. And when you finally do clear it out and it stops barking, there's a silence there that is always a surprise. And living with that silence and going, oh, I can relax now. Notice that you, if you haven't relaxed, you can relax and say, oh, I can just go, ha, ha, ha. I can not be in chattered at nonstop. I can live with the silence of, I have a clear space now. And it's like the silence one feels in a hotel. Exactly, exactly. There's not too much stuff in a hotel. It is a blank room basically with bare minimum stuff. And you can think of how you feel when you go to an empty space and imagine that empty space being your space instead. Before we get to this week's assignment, I want to remind our viewers and listeners that we have a YouTube channel with more than 150 videos on lots and lots of topics. Visit cfhou.com slash YouTube. While you're there, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon next to the subscribe button if you would like to get notifications when we post new content. I also want to say a special thank you to Sarah for, for becoming our newest Patreon supporter. I am not repeating myself. I know we thanked Sarah a couple of weeks ago. This is a new Sarah. Different Sarah. (laughs) Our last two new patrons have both been named Sarah. So if you would like to help support our efforts with a recurring monthly donation of any size, whether your name is Sarah or not, please visit (laughs) cfhou.com slash Patreon, P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Your contributions help us offset the costs of producing the weekly webcast and will also help us fund new projects that we have in the works. Thank you for your generosity, Sarah, and all of our patrons. I also want to remind everyone we'll be back next week, live on Tuesday, July 20th at noon U.S. Central Time, live in Zoom and streaming on Facebook. We're going to get into the subject of unpacking, optimizing your new space, starting off on the right foot. And then also for, you know, those who are not in, in that situation, digging into the things that you've never dealt with from the last move or (laughs) whatever. Boxes that are in the corner that you haven't unpacked yet. (laughs) Right. Whatever unpacking challenge any of you may be facing. We're going to call this episode leader of the unpack. (laughs) empty your boxes and start strong in a new space okay (laughs) okay let's get to the weekly tittle okay so the weekly tittle is this week is called turning priorities into plans 
This week's assignment is to apply the first prioritizing principle to a single room or a section of a room in your space. So identify the room or part of a room that gives you the most discomfort, a place that looks or feels crowded, confused, or unattractive to you. Write down the purpose or purposes that you would like for your problem spot to serve. Then make a second list of all the uses that the problem spot is currently serving, whether you intended it to be that or not. And then notice any uses or purposes on the second list that are not on the first list. So what we're trying to get you to do is imagine what you want the room to be, figure out what the room is actually doing, and then finding the things that the room is doing that you're gonna have to think through, relocate, put in a new space, decide um, where it's gonna go. So it's part of the initial planning of a space to recognize what you've been using it for and that you really don't want it to be the place where all the dirty laundry sits, or you really don't want it to be the place where you park the mail when it comes in the house. Identifying what you want to be there and what is actually there will give you the subset of things I have to figure out where to relocate instead. <laughs> things that I have to decide where this function is gonna go. Because it's clearly a problem that you try to solve or by default have not solved by leaving it in the room where it is and it's not really where you want it to be. So that is a problem that we're trying to isolate for you so that you can recognize that this is a piece that of organizing that you have to solve and go figure out where it can go instead. Yeah, and the assignment is small. It's identifying and isolating the problem. Not, We're not trying to solve it this week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just think about what what's the missing um, project that you have to address there in order to make the room become what you want it to be. If you're watching this on YouTube, we would love for you to join us live. To get notifications about upcoming events, we invite you to join the meetup group by visiting cfhou.com slash meetup. You can also follow us on Facebook by going to cfhou.com slash Facebook or subscribe to our mailing list by visiting cfhou.com slash subscribe. We love to hear from you, so please send us your questions, comments, and topic suggestions in YouTube comments, on Facebook, or anywhere else that you find us. And you can always reach us through our website at clutterfairhouston.com. Thank you, everybody. Uh, we do get a lot of emails from you through the website, and we appreciate that you come and comment that way. And we are always happy to talk to you. So thanks for joining us today. We're glad that you came back after vacation with us. <laughs> and we will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.